Okay folks, we're quickly going to run through some of the important stuff in Chapter 3, Symbolic Logic and Proof. We've done this in the beginning in Chapter 0 when we learned the language of discrete mathematics and we brought at that stage we brought in the idea of truth tables. So you should be quite familiar with the truth tables that we're going to use um, in this particular chapter. He starts off by saying logic is the study of consequence. Very important statement that's made there. So what is it? Well, we start with some given conditions, which we call the premises of our argument. And from these, we find a consequence of interest, which we'll call our conclusion. He then talks about what is good and bad arguments and what they mean. So I want to go straight to the definition. Okay, the definition, he says, an argument is a state a set of statements, one of which is called the conclusion, and the rest of which are called premises. An argument is said to be valid if the conclusion must be true whenever the premises are all true. An argument, therefore, is invalid if it's not valid, clearly. Therefore, it is possible for all the premises to be true, and the conclusion um, of our argument. He then, or he then continues with an example. Consider the two following arguments. If Edith eats her vegetables, then she can have a cookie. Edith eats her vegetables, therefore Edith gets a cookie. The second argument. Florence must eat her vegetables in order to get a cookie. Florence eats her vegetables, Florence gets a cookie. The book then concludes that the second argument is not valid, but only the first argument is valid. And it's quite an interesting thing to think about. Well, in the first argument, there's an if-then statement. So, Edith eats her vegetables could be the first statement. Then, the second statement, she can have a cookie. Well, A happened, which then implies that B happened. There is nothing in the second statement that makes it conditional for her to eat her vegetables to get a cookie. It merely says she has to eat her vegetables. In order for her to get a cookie would then mean she could have been asked to do the dishes, to clear the table, and then get her cookie. So there's something that the first statement has that the segment, second statement does not possess. And that is the logic in the argument. And we'll see more of this as we go through the work. We talk about this as propositional logic. So what is a proposition? Well, a proposition is a statement. Propositional logic studies the ways statements can interact with each other. He says it is important to remember that propositional logic does not really care about the content of the statements. For example, in terms of prob prob uh, propositional logic, the claims, if the moon is made of cheese and basketballs are round, and if spiders have eight legs and Sam walks with a limp, are exactly the same. There's an if-then statement. There are both implications, statements of the form, if P, then Q. Okay, these are implications, if P, then Q. Well, a tool we're going to use from now on is the tool we use at the beginning of the semester, the truth table. Okay, here's a question about playing Monopoly. If, notice the language, if you get more doubles than any other player, then you will lose. Or, if you lose, then you must have bought the most properties. That's talking about the game of Monopoly. This is called tautology. Tautology is true on the basis of its logical form alone. Okay? Is it true or false, the above? We will answer this question and won't need to know anything about Monopoly. Instead, what he looks at is the logical form of the argument.
He says, we need to decide whether the statement if P then Q or if Q then R is true. Using the definitions of connectedness that you studied before, we see that for this to be true, either P then Q must be true or, that symbol, remember, represents or, uh, Q then R must be true, or both. That's the or symbol. This is true, or that is true, or both of them are true. Those are true if either P is false or Q is true. In the first case, or Q is false or R is true. In the second case. Now remember on page 6 of your book, A or B means then A is true or B is true or both. Okay, very important that you know and remember what we learn. He continues then by saying, since the truth value of a statement is completely determined by the truth values of its parts and how they connected, all you really need to know is the truth tables for each of the logic connectives, logical connectives. Okay, so let's have a look. Remember, what did we do? We formed our tables P and Q. True, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. And then we looked at P and Q. That, remember, that is AND. Okay, so that's the truth table just for this situation. We're reminding ourselves of what we've learned. Okay, so if I use that, I want to prove P and Q. Well, P and Q are true when both are true. We call that a conjunction, remember? So when both of them are true, then it's a conjunction. The only time when both of them are true is the first one. So the rest of them are false because both of them are not true and here both of them are false. Okay, let's look at the second one. We have P and Q and now we're looking at P or Q. Now remember, P or Q are true. When P or Q or both are true, it's called a disjunction. Conjunction, disjunction. Okay, so let's have a look. We set up our truth table again. P, true, true, false, false. This is pretty standard. You can see that happening through each case. Okay, so we're not going to go through this all the time. Let's look at P or Q. It says that P or Q will be true when P or Q or both are true. Okay, P or Q. So let's go and look at P. P is true for the first two, so the statement is true for that. Let's look at the second. Q is true in row 1 and row 3, so it's still true. Here we have something that's not true. We have false, so they're both not true there. Therefore, we have a false. So for the conjunction, you can study this. You don't have to uh, put this in your memory bank. You don't have to always write it out like we do over here. So if you can remember that the conjunction in this form is true and everything else false, and the disjunction is true, 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 and false, then you can merely just go to that place in your head. The third thing to, to put to memory is the conditional statements, if, then. It's an implication. We call it an implication or a conditional statement. We call P the hypothesis, remember, and Q is called the conclusion. Okay, so this reads, if P, then Q. Well, when is this true? Remember, this is true when P is false or Q is true or both. Okay, so let's have a look. Both of them are true there. So that's the case then. That case is true. Now let's start with the first statement if P is false. The last two is where P is false. So at the last two we'll have a true and a true coming out. Then it says 
or Q is true. Now Q is true only in first and in third. So in the second where Q is false, we'll have a false. Okay, so for the conditional or the implicational statements, if P then Q, this will be true where P is false, where Q is true, or where they're both true. Okay, put that to memory. Number four is the if and only if statement, the biconditional we call this. Okay, now when is this true? It is true when P over there and Q are both true or both false. Well, there they're both true, so that's true. Here one of them is true, the other one false, so that's false. Here the first is false, the second is true, so that's false. And here they're both false, so the statement will be true. Remember, this is called biconditional. Okay, then we look at the negation. Our negation talks about P and not P. This is what the truth table for any negation would look like. Where P is true, the not P is false. Where P is false, the not P is true. So, not P is true when P is false. It's called a negation. Remember again, a disjunction. Sorry, that's a disjunction. This is a conjunction. This is a conditional statement. That's biconditional. And this is a negation. Now, if you can commit this to memory, then you don't always have to go through the truth table. But of course, you can construct the full truth table for whatever it is that you're going to. Okay, so let's look at our first example. They ask us to make a truth table for not P or Q. Okay, now I've made a summary of there's the summary. Okay, so let's draw up our truth table. We've got two statements. We've got P. Okay, so we start by drawing up our truth table for P and Q. This is true, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. Okay, so now a negation of P, not P, which means it is false when P is true or true when P is false. So this truth changes to false, false, true, true. And now we want to look at this statement over here, not P or Q. Well, P or Q is true when P or Q are both true. So we're looking for when not P and not, oh sorry, and Q. When not P and Q are true. Okay, so let's see. They both have to be true. P true or Q true or both true. They both of them are true. Sorry, we're looking at this column here. They Q is true, so this will be true. Here, Q is also true, so that will be true. If we look at where P is true, it's true there and true here. And they happen to be both true in row 3. So the only time that this will be false, this type of argument will be false, is in the case where both of them are indeed false. Okay, our second example. Let's look at this. It says, if you get more doubles, than any other player you will lose. We're returning to our Monopoly question, by the way. Or that if you lose, you must have bought the most properties. So let us look at the key words in the statement. There's the if, and then let's read. If you get more doubles than any other player, so we can insert a then, you will lose the if-then part. Then the word OR, which brings in our symbol for us. If you lose, 
then you must have bought the most properties. Okay, we've analyzed our statement properly. So how are we going to write this? Well, let's see. Let's say you get more doubles than any other person is our first statement and we're going to say that is statement P. Let's come down a little bit. There we go. That is statement P. Our next statement will be then you will lose and we're going to call that statement Q. Okay, let's read on. If you lose, so here statement Q repeats itself again. Then you must have bought the most properties a new statement. We're going to call that statement R. Okay, now let's turn this into a logic statement. If P, if P, then Q, then Q. Or, our second part of that statement, now you can see there's commas here. The comma usually indicates that there's got to be a bracket of some sort that separates these two statements here. The, these two parts of the statement rather. So, let's read on. If you lose, if Q, then you must have bought the most properties, then R. Now we want to find out, is this statement true? So we're going to run to a truth table, construct our truth table, and make a conclusion from there. Okay, so let's have a look. This is basically what we're focusing on, and let's bring our crypt note in. The logic, this is obviously the stuff that's in your head. So while you are still committing this to memory, um, uh, we, will, we shall use this as our prompt. Okay, so let's just see. Ultimately, this is a A or B statement. So we're going to go to B or Q. This will be true when P or Q or both of those are true. So when this is true, or that is true, or both of these will be true. So we've got to break these two statements up find their truth values and then only will we look at the OR component. So there's three statements. So we set up our truth table. We start with P, Q and R. We bring our lines down. We form our truth table quite nicely. I hope my lines are straight enough. So here we'll have true, 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 false, 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 false. Then we'll alternate between a double true, a double false, a double true, a double false, and we do this to make sure that we cover all the possible cases. Then for R we'll alternate true, false, true, false, true, uh, false, true, and false. Now the first statement we want to look at is if P then Q. Well let's see. If P then Q is true when P is false or Q is true or both of them are true. The OR means one or the other or both. Okay? In this case, we're looking for their truth values. So let's go and let's investigate when P is false. P is false with the last four entries. So it means it will be true the conditional statement will be true. So again, it's true when P is false or Q is true. So we go to Q. Q is true in the first two rows and in those two rows we've already recorded. Any other place it will be false. So for that conditional statement it's true, true, false, false, true, 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 true. Okay, let's look at the second part of that statement the Q then R and it deals with exactly the same thing. Okay, so we're going to look at where Q is false. Q is false in row 2, uh, row 3 and row 4. So there the statement will be true. 
Okay, then it's again false in the last two. So it's true there and true there. Then we go and look at where R is true. R is true there, false there, true here, false here, true there, so it's another true, and then it's true, rather I should say, uh, the second last one. Everywhere else, this statement is going to be false. Okay, so let's just make sure you've got two, four, six, eight. Yes. Now we go, if we just call this A and we call that B, we're looking for A or B. Well, A or B is true when P or Q or both are true. Okay, so where A or B is true. So there's a true and a true. So there it will be true. A true, 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 true. True 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 we go to the second statement it is true where this one is true true and true so the complete statement on the the, the monopoly problem is indeed a true statement by okay so we can conclude that this will always be true if p then q or q then r is an argument that is always results in a truth via our truth okay folks and just a reminder as the book points out to you the statement about monopoly is an example of tautology a statement which is true on the basis of its logical form alone tautologies are always true but they don't tell us much about the world no knowledge about monopoly was required to determine whether this statement was indeed true or false. So the idea of a tautology is focused on form only. Okay, our next thing we're going to look at is something called logical equivalence. Okay, so he starts and he talks about that by looking at this truth table here. He said you might have noticed in the example we did right in the beginning now that the final column of the truth table not P or Q is identical to the final column in the truth table if then if Q, P then Q. Now just to remind yourself